Then also Adam Agbana. He currently is a parliamentary candidate for Ketu North. And Adam, how are you? Roland, you, thank you. You were in Ho, I think. Yes, I was in Ho yesterday. Uh, thank you so much. Let me say good morning to you, to my colleagues on the panel, and mm. to everyone watching us, uh, especially the good people of Ketu North. And uh, to use the platform to say a big thank you to the hundreds of thousands of Ghanaians who came out yesterday to demonstrate their fidelity <coughs> to the Republic by participating in the Enough is Enough demonstration. Indeed, if there is uh, any time in our history where change uh, is imminent, where change is needed by the people of Ghana, it is now. And I'm happy Ghanaians came out in their numbers to, to show that indeed we want a credible register so that we can all freely participate in the elections Adam, and elect John Dramani Mahama. Just help, just help. Is that if you are making your first submission? No, no, no that's not my submission. Just it's like, it's this, not your submission. This is greeting. Okay, so let's go through what the Electoral Commission uh, has been uh, saying by way of the response to the demonstration. And they issued a letter. I have to say that it was around after, after midnight. So I don't know why the Electoral Commission. Now they issued a statement after midnight, knowing that God died, uh, God sleeps. Uh, I'm wondering. Anyway, response to NDC's petition following demonstration on Tuesday, 17th of September 2024. The Electoral Commission has received the petition, and subsequently you go to the third paragraph. They say the commission is mindful that the voters' register is the bedrock <coughs> of a credible, fair, and transparent elections. So they assure the NDC and all stakeholders of the EC's avowed commitment to deliver a credible and robust final register ahead of the December 2024 elections. And in the meantime, they say their doors are open. They look forward to engaging the NDC on the concerns. Adam, they are engaging you uh, on your concerns. It's not as if that <coughs> the call for audit is in place. What do you make of this? Roland, let me thank the leadership of the NDC for <coughs> leading us, leading Ghanaians to participate in the nationwide demonstration held in all 16 regions yesterday. I was in the Volta Regional Capital Hall where uh, tens of thousands of people marched to the Electoral Commission's office with a single message that we want a credible register. We want the Electoral Commission to be transparent. We want the Electoral Commission to conduct itself in ways that can increase our confidence in them. <clears throat> Let me say that, Roland. Elections are not events. Elections are not events. Elections is not a, a day's activity. So all the processes leading to December 7th are processes that we must all be very interested in as key stakeholders in our democratic process. And so right from day one, the conduct of the Electoral Commission, the utterances of officials of the Electoral Commission, and their response anytime the NDC raises concerns is a matter of public concern. And so if today, we in the NDC, and in fact, many other Ghanaians, civil society, are of the view that we have no confidence in the Electoral Commission. It is based on a trajectory of events that have happened in the past, right from how many members of the Commission were appointed and the personalities of the people appointed, their background, their history, and all of that. So give me a few minutes to run through that. Apart from the fact that President Akufado clearly disregarded and disrespected the constitution of Ghana by appointing known partisan people into the Electoral Commission, persons like Juan Apiahini, who was an MPP communicator, we have videos, we have video evidence of him in studios of radio stations actively defending the NPP as an NPP communicator. <clears throat> and yet, he found his way into the Electoral Commission. Dr. Bosman Asari, and I get very surprised when 
the NPP members, those on social media, go about defending Bosman Asari and make claims that he was never a Tescon patron or what have you. I was a student at the University of Ghana. In fact, Dr. Bosman Asari took me for at least two or three semesters at the Political Science Department. He was an active member of the NPP Lecturers Caucus on campus. And I can mention many members of that Lecturers Caucus. So at the department, we all could identify the lecturers that were pro-NDC, lecturers that were pro-MPP. The likes of Isaac Ousu Mensah, who today is the director of research at the presidency. The likes of Dr. Ziblim, who was deputy minister of tourism in Isaac the last... Isaac Yeah, Isaac Ousu who, who did the research? The research, yes. He was my lecturer, so he taught me political research. At the time we were at the faculty or we were at the department, political science department, <coughs> we all knew him as an MPP or a pro-NPP member. And in fact, he was working with a pro-NPP international organization, the likes of Bosman Asari. And many of these lecturers, we all could tell their political affiliations. But some of us expected or thought that given the platform as an electoral commissioner, they were going to act in ways that could exude confidence in them. But they have chosen to be very partisan in the way they do things. Recall that in 2020, Dr. Bosman Asari, a referee, or someone who is supposed to be the referee, sat on radio and publicly said the NDC was a danger to our democracy. Imagine a referee making such claims about one of the political parties. And so those who are defending Bosman Asari, you don't know him better than some of us. So when we say we have always known him as an MPP member, we know what we are talking about. And Apia Hini and many others. Away from the individuals, our demand is that give the people of Ghana a credible register. It was expected of the Electoral Commission to provide the NDC <coughs> and indeed all political parties with copies of the register before the exhibition exercise. They delayed. It took several efforts by our elections director, Dr. Omani Buama, and the NDC to get the Electoral Commission to provide the register a few hours before the commencement of the exhibition. When they provided the register, we also instituted, knowing the kind of people we were dealing with, we instituted our own internal mechanisms to check the credibility of the register. And then we realized we saw several several, several discrepancies. And these are significant discrepancies. Over 250,000 people who transferred their votes in 2020 got their names again on the 2024 transfer list. And so it is now very difficult for us to tell the actual number of people who transferred their votes in 2024. Adam, if you listen to the electoral commission, no, so, they are so, so, very so, so, emphatic Roland, and Roland, very specific. Roland, that those over 200 to 300,000 individuals, and then the evidence thereof <clears> that is linking them to that, to, to them, or those anomalies and discrepancies that you say, furnish them. Roland, we are calling for a forensic audit of the register because the EC itself admitted and describe those errors as mere anomalies. And if indeed you are not part of a certain scheme to rig elections for the ruling party, if indeed the Electoral Commission is not acting as the electoral wing of this failed Bahumia Akufado government, allow for a forensic audit. The NDC is not <coughs> acting that our youth wing or our elections directorate will be the institution performing the audit. We are asking that bring in a credible institution, independent body, to conduct the forensic audit. What are you running away from? Roland, it is as simple as, let me, you know, for people who may find it difficult to appreciate what the issues are. This is basically an issue about one party in an election finding out several significant errors and discrepancies in the register 
and the party is calling for an audit of the register and the electoral commission is running away from the audit the npp is asking that they will not allow for the audit to be conducted what are they running away from if you are not in to rig elections or it was not deliberate what are you running away from again roland if you have about fifteen thousand people being transferred and yet where they are their vote is being transferred to is not known per the records that you have provided you think that these are not critical issues when in the history of this republic we have seen many constituencies where the either the ndc or the npp win with a margin of less than 100 less than 50 as we speak we've had constituencies where somebody went to parliament winning with a margin of three votes we've had many as we speak there are about 56 constituencies that either the ndc or the mpp won or lost with a margin of less than four thousand as if you have about fifteen thousand people being transferred without any record of which constituency or which polling station they are being transferred to these are very significant issues that we are demanding an audit of and we are surprised at the posturing of the electoral commission in this matter and look we want jane mensa and the npp to know we want the electoral commission to know Let that for me. Ghanaians are interested in a credible register if indeed you have performed why are you running away from having a credible register for the people of ghana to exercise their Thank franchise you very much roland i once again let me take this opportunity to greet the good people of ghana and the government for its efforts i think that i mean as always the ndc will always run to the media and throw dust into the eyes of the ghanaian people you think organizing a demonstration is throwing dust? for us as a political party we want a free and fair election and no other body than the ec is cloaked by the constitution of ghana to give us this election because at the end of the day it's the body with the mandate to run elections in this country the npb has been here before I quite remember that in 2013, going to 2016, we had also called for a credible voters register. Of course, in those instances, we made sure that we engaged and provided the data to the EC and the Ghanaian people for them to, for, to back our claims. But of course, we are here. The NDC has run to media houses, has gone on the streets and made all kinds of allegations. The EC has a forum where these things can be discussed. And in that particular outfit, it is not just even the NDC that is going to be present because every political party is affected by the register. The impression should not be created as though only the NDC is going to use that register. It's as important to the MPP, to the PMP, to the uh, CPP and all other political parties that we shall run this election free and fair. But we shall also not be hoodwinked into believing that the NDC at any point in time can spring out of nowhere and come and castigate anybody, make all sorts of allegations as though this election is about what they want or nothing else. What is the NDC saying? The NDC is saying that the voters register is not credible. What's their basis? They have done a certain audit and they have identified one or two people, they've identified transfer issues, they've even made an allegation that they have over 200,000 people who have been transferred without regards to how the transfer came about. The EC, as far as we are concerned, has said that. Provide us that data. We, you and I, just like myself, can only make informed decisions as to our opinion on this matter when we know what goes into it. It shouldn't be that at any point in time, of the 23 persons who supposedly have registered with the EC to stand in this election, anybody at all comes with a certain opinion. If we are, we are saying that we are going to go on that tangent, we may never even go into the polls. All that is expected of the NDC is to provide the EC with whatever they've identified so that the EC, with a self-correcting mechanism, as we have, like the exhibition that we have, the essence of exhibition in any way, is for the system to correct itself. You and I know, even in this studio that we are sitting, you and your producers, at every point in time when you come into this studio, you do assessments of what you are going to do. There are challenges you face. I mean, I sit here and I see some of your cameramen directing you to adjust and all that. It's all part of the processes. Roland, you've been doing this for how many years? Yes, to each and every day, you self-correct yourself. Why do we create an impression as though the EC is onto something which has never been seen before? In any case, it's not the NPP position to defend the EC or state the EC's position. It looks like that's the, our position that's is that we are a party to the upcoming elections. It looks like that's a posture. I can, what like I said, as far as we are concerned, <clears throat> we are stakeholders to this process. We are stakeholders because we represent the Ghanaian people as a mandate. 
And I believe that, given the chance going into December 7th, the Ghanaian people are going to vote us back into this government. Then again, it should also not be made as if the NDC's only position going into this election is that they have won. And for that matter, they are going to force the Ghanaian people into anything that they want. I mean, for me, clearly, all these things that have been pointed out by the NDC is to prepare the mind of their base that, you know what, this election, we have to win by hook or crook. And if we don't win, it is because somebody is rigging. The NDC doesn't have a message going to this election. Roland, I'm telling you. I think the past, No, no, you ask me a question. Allow, where, me, allow me to land. Where, where, where we I have instances... Have, no, listen. J Jihai, please see, listen to me. You, have, want, you want to question yourself no, and answer. No, but you're asking me a question. What I'm answering, why are you please, not holding please, me down? Please, 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 please. Don't don't harass me, please. I'm not harassing no, you. No, because that's what you're but doing. But I'm saying that you ask me a question. Isaac, yeah, I, I, I don't like if you come and you you harass the host. I don't like it. I can Roland, replace. You go oh, ahead. No, please. You Let's not create this. I'm animosity. saying I go ahead. So listen to me. Where you have before now instances where the electoral commission, based on concerns that had been raised by the EC, uh, by the NDC, right, that they have information and credible sources indicating that machines that are used to capture biometric information or data of ordinary voters are missing. The EC then denies and later comes in to concede that rather laptops are those that are missing. And subsequently, you go on on the street, you find a gentleman arrested as a hoodlum but in possession of a device that belongs to the Electoral Commission of Ghana. And subsequently, the information is a bit touchy and, and, and not consistent Roland. from the same electoral commission. Roland. Appointments that have been made over the period, it creates the level of trust and animosity that has gotten us where we are today. Roland. Is that not the case? Roland, what are the, EC issue, what are the issues that the, EC, uh, the NDC has presented to us? The NDC is saying that they need the voters register to be verified. In other words, they are trying to say that there has to be a forensic audit because they have noted discrepancies in the voters register. They also say that the exhibition that the voters register or the EC is doing is not enough for them. The issue about, I mean, a biometric device, which I, I believe that is an issue that came about and the EC has addressed that. In any case, all the things that the NDC is saying, the EC has not denied that it is not looking into it. The EC says that we have a platform. In any case, like I said, it should not be in the position of the EC to address each and every political party independently. Because at the end of the day, when you do so, you are blinding other parties who are stakeholders to the elections. And so there's a forum. And this forum is the IPAC. IPAC is a platform where all the political parties come together. The impression being created to the Ghanaian people is that the NDC doesn't have any platform. The only thing they can do is go into the media and make all the noise they are doing. The EC has a platform where each and every political party comes to sit with the EC, raises issues for address. That aside, the EC says that they have, a, they have had a meeting with the uh, NDC. In the said meeting, the NDC made allegations or identified certain loopholes in the supposed register. The EC says that we are equally aware of some of these issues you have raised. The NDC provided the EC with a pen drive, claiming that they need a copy of the register. The EC says that, Within the processes, that copy will be given to you. That notwithstanding, all the issues that you have identified, make it available to us. Within a week, within one week, we are going to make sure that we give you feedback. Three days, NDC and all their people have been going about. None of these things had been provided to the EC as at the time of the press conference. You and I listened to the press conference. At the time of the press conference <coughs> of the EC, the NDC had not provided the details of whatever they claimed they have found in the register. In 2012 and 2016, when NPP was raising issues about the register, we went across the whole country and made sure that we identified very people who we claim have issues. We even went to the extent of going to Togo to make sure that we have identified people who are in the Togolese register and have been found in the Ghanaian register. Look at the difference between this and what the NDC is saying. They are just out there making all the noise, trying to galvanize their base in an election where they see that clearly they are losing. And I was trying to draw your attention to something. I'm telling you, I've been to the Upper East region. I've been to Talency, I've been to Pusiga, I've been to Binduri. And I've gone across this country and I've seen what is coming to happen. And the NDC is very much aware of what is coming to happen. They are only trying to face their campaign. It is something which is sinking. And the earlier the NDC people accept that this is an election that is lost, Mr. the better Solomon it is for them. Yes. No amount of noise is going to save Mr. them Solomon in this election. Also, yes. in, in 2015, there are concerns that had been raised by the MPP. Yes. And of course, there was IPAC. Yes. 
but it still went about held press conferences, went about with let my vote count demonstrations, etc. They even had the IEA, because IEA then was a, a fora for everybody else. So of course, the NDC decided not to participate in uh, some of those fora as well. But uh, after which the, ND, uh, the, the, the NDC, uh, based on their concerns in response to the MPP's issues, had a position that they want the EC to be allowed to work. We've come to this point where the IEA at the time also says that the cost implications of audit auditing the existing voters register of compiling a new register should not take away from steps to provide a credible and acceptable register for the 2016 election. So we've come to full circle. You look at the various positions before and today, the individuals involved, the electoral commission chair who once headed the IEA her position today and her position then. And where we are today, looking at the discrepancies that have been noticed. What do you make of it? It is not sad. What is sad? I mean, the situation you just uh, painted, described, painted uh, it, it tells you that we are not sincere people. And it's one of the reasons why we are not developing as a country. Mm. We lie to ourselves. The position of high today was the position of the NDC yesterday. The position of them today was the position of the MPP yesterday. So why must they? That's why I like the team they gave to their demonstration. Enough is enough. Enough of the NDC, enough of the N MPP. Let's go for the independent candidate. And you see, the very position Hyde espoused is the more reason why there must be an independent audit of the electoral register. How? We are talking about IPAC. What is IPAC? Inter-party advisory committee. My candidate, Alan Chamanti, is contesting as an independent candidate. Where does he fit in this equation? In that, the narrative. In the narrative. In the advocacy. In the advocacy. <laughs> I mean, and, and make no mistake, nobody must arrogate to themselves that this election is between the NDC and the MPP. You can be jubilating over some concocted, uh, uh, as it were, electoral research. That's your own uh, 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 cup of tea. But at the end of the day, December 7th, we'll show, look, the Electoral Commission's own admission of the fact that there has been some illegalities perpetrated in the album or the voter register should have ended this matter. We have Pussyga to deal with. Bosman Asare, I heard him admit that indeed there has been illegal transfers. Then what else are you looking for? So you ask yourself a simple question. If the NDC had not identified that, would the Electoral Commission have come back to us to say that, yes, uh, per our own checks, there has been illegal transfers, now come on, they should give us a break. The moment Bosman Asari admitted that indeed there has been illegal transfer, the Electoral Commission, per common sense, should have called a stakeholders meeting and said, look, where we have gotten to, we have to conduct a forensic audit. That would have put this matter to rest. But this business of uh, we are independent, we are independent, no, it doesn't work like that. You have even gone ahead to arrest someone, the person has been granted bail, it means that there has been fraud perpetrated. So I don't see why you must still wait on the, the National Democratic Congress to give you further and better particulars. They have already proven their case. And my candidate, Alan, believes that there has to be a forensic audit. Because we cannot be going around the entire country, we are a lot of voters, and at the end of the day, somebody sits somewhere and manipulate the system against the will of the people. The Electoral Commission's own statement they issued yesterday night is an ample testament that the credibility, credibility of the voter register is the bedrock of a successful election. That is being questioned. So how do you deal with that? Calling an independent uh, institution. After all, when we went to the Supreme Court during the electoral election petition, the Supreme Court could have self-audited the pin sheet. What did they do? They called in an independent institution, KPMG. Was that not the case? So what is wrong with calling in an independent institution to come and help in your situation. So for me, as much as I do about that, the Electoral Commission must learn from its own history, must go back and do what is right, because elections, there are so much at stake. Mr. Usu, yes. if you take how the output, yes. by way of supervision management of the current management of the Electoral Commission, yes. i.e. all those who have been appointed over the period, Madam Jim Mensa, Bosman Asari, what their principles were, et cetera. What, what, how would you describe it? Honestly, I am not too much into the backgrounds of people, whether they are coming from God. The Electoral Commission is a vote. 
So once the person votes, it means the person is trying an independent person. But your actions and inactions will show whether or not you'll be a neutral person. From what is going on, the entrenched position, especially and yesterday, I was very surprised to learn from uh, the organizer of the National uh, New Patriotic Party that they are not going to allow for yes. an independent. That was for me a reckless statement. That you are not going to from allow for Henry Nabuache. Yes, but he's noted for French. But why would you not allow for an independent an uh, uh, independent institution to to audit a register so that we would get a credible register and a credible election? Are you impeding or stampeding a credible election? No, it must be in the interest of the new patriotic party that a credible election is held. After all, one will win, one will lose, and I'm so clear in my mind mm. that Alan Kojo Chairman will win these elections. So why are you stampeding or impeding that process? You, 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 you understand? The decision by the president to appoint someone like Apiahini, if I were him, I wouldn't do it. Because first, it, it gives the commission a bad name. You understand? A known MPP person serving on... Uh, You're saying by principle? By principle. Because there is no law. As if you look at the qualification of any member of a commissioner, it does not state whether or not that person must not belong to a political party. Mm -hmm. And these are matters that our constitutional review body must go into it so that it, it saves all of us from these troubles. But, I mean, it's something that you know that when you appoint a known MPP person, it will create a problem. You understand? Especially where le illegal transfers have been identified. Now, if you go to where these things are taking place, don't take it for, for a joke. The last election in Pusiga, the difference between the MPP and the NDC was 63 votes. And so if you are learning that illegal transfers are taking place from Tamala South and San Arigu to Pusiga, then what would be your assumption or conclusion? It should make up for that gap. Now, when the BVD machines got missing, where was it found? Was it all in Sawam? If you go and check in Sawam at Wajiri, the difference between the MPP and NDC has reduced from somewhere 12,000 to 3,000. So if I come and find a BVD machine in that constituency, then what is the perception? And nobody can convince me that it cannot be used for anything else. So the simple thing you do is that you audit the voter register, and not just the, just the voter register, because we have a concern with the IT system itself. How is Movement it? for change? Yeah, this is how we have a, a huge problem with that. Why? Because we believe from our own internal arrangement and from our investigations, uh, investigations that it is very easy to, to, to enter the EI. It is porous? Very porous. Very porous. So come and let us all audit and certify ourselves that in this election, the EC's own voter register and the IT system are robust, as the EC has been telling us all, all, all this while. But if you come, up, uh, uh, come to us and tell us that even in 2016, there were animals and trees in there. When animals and trees were compiled by yourself and given to us, then what are you talking about? Yeah. So that is what we are saying. All right. So whether I, I, we got also some information. There are, there are personalities around who are ordinary voters who are also raising issues. And they are not political. They're just normal voters. So we've got a number of instances like that. I'll put somebody on the line. He's called Mark. Not, not his full name because of... Um, protection and confidentiality purposes. And Mark will tell us a very, um, I won't say it's a strange experience, but fits into why the advocacy is that the Electoral Commission should perhaps accede to some of these demands so that everybody will sit around the table or not, if that should be a question. Uh, Mark, good morning to you. Yeah, good morning. Okay, I know that, um, you are a voter, but you are speaking on behalf of uh, your wife. Is that not the case? Yes, please. And you drew my attention to your experiences when the register was displayed. Is that not it? That's right. Okay, so you sent me uh, the screenshot. So I've been able to blur the name, at least for now, even though not necessarily um, the identification number, but it's for good reason. Tell me, tell me your story. Okay, um, what really happened is this. Um, my wife went to the polling station to, you know, doing the verification exercise. And along the line, you know, she noticed that her name disappeared from the register. They couldn't trace it. So when she came back home, I decided to, you know, go through the internet and check through the, uh, the, the, the code that they gave. 
So uh, upon checking, we noticed that uh, you know the same ID card number displayed a name you know called uh, a Sia Beniwa. The same ID, the uh, voter's ID number displayed the name a Sia Beniwa. Age twenty eight, gender female, and then the police station <laughs> number is having the code. S zero one two nine zero two D A primary school therefore say new adjudicate in Ashanti region. But she registered at the uh, Ashama uh, committee came to annex. So this is so this is the experience and this is the challenge. Okay. So all, all it means is that she cannot even vote at this moment. She voted twenty twenty two. Uh, 2020 elections. So she she's, she's not a first time voter. She's not a first time voter. She 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 has voted before, and has, it's the same polling station or area, right? We are the same polling station, and the polling station number is three two six one four zero seven. See, can you hear me? Yeah, go ahead. Yes, the police station number is C two six one four zero seven. Okay. And the voter voter's identification number is one zero zero one two zero eight two eight. That's the ID number. So so wait, Mark, your 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 wife's is this center number or voter's ID number has been given to somebody else? Yes, that is what. And then means. more so, and the location has been changed. The location has been changed. The police station, the you region has changed from Ashama to Ashanti region. All right, thank you very much, Mark, for some of these experiences. And uh, okay. okay, so so these are some of the issues, yeah, right? I mean, yes. and we have uh, we have a number of them. I could go on and yeah, but and I mean, then Roland. You so, can so, me so, so all these issues. Kofi Capito also has. It has a similar issue, Roland. Uh, even in the voter yeah, region. Yeah, yeah. Our deputy regional secretary, Edgar Bright, could not find his name in the register. And this is somebody who voted in 2020, somebody who used the same ID card to contest party position in 2022 and has been using this ID card all this while. And so we have noticed grave discrepancies in the register. So why is the Electoral Commission afraid of an audit? Roland. <clears throat> And to my surprise, and look, the NPP and the Electoral Commission daily, they keep exposing themselves. The national organizer of the NPP, your boss, wrote on his Facebook wall yesterday that the NPP will resist any attempt to have the register audited. But well, somebody said that's their position. They're entitled to their position. No, by, if, if the Electoral Commission is an independent body, yes. is it the NPP that would determine whether or not the consensus of one of the other parties in the elections mm -hmm. to have a register audited, forensic audit, by an independent person. It is not as if we are sending the NDC to go and audit the register. If you know that you are not in any secret marriage where you are conniving to rig the elections and so you come and ridiculously make statements like we win the election on strategy. And this is their strategy. We have exposed you. And we have exposed you and given you seven or more reasons why the register must be audited. And you are running away from the audit. Now, the Electoral Commission itself admitted that there are problems with the register. So before you produce a final register, have the register audited. They are credible institutions. And we are not asking that we want to conduct the audit for you. So why are they running away from the audit? If indeed they do not, they are not, they don't want to rig the elections for the MPP. And for me, in all of these things, my message is to the Peace Council and the so-called advocates for peace. Why? Roland, peace is an outcome <clears throat> of pro the various processes. The NDC will not sit down and say in the name of peace, we will just sit aloof and watch the Electoral Commission misbehave and attempt rigging the election. We will resist it. And so if you are calling for peace, don't be hypocrites. Be interested in calling for the register to be audited. 
be interested in having a credible register. That is the only way by which the other parties in the election will have confidence in the process going forward. Now you sit here and you tell us that the NDC doesn't have a message. My goodness. Look at this failed government. You're talking about message. What is your message? That you cancel 10% betting tax, something you introduced and has defended all this while. Is that not hypocrisy? Is that not a shame? That something that you introduced, that you call that your message? What is your message? That you cancel e-levy. When you introduced e-levy and we opposed it, you sat on this platform and defended it and said it was a panacea for economic growth. Today, you call that your message and you talk about NDC losing these elections. Which research are you even speaking to? Even your own presidency. Your manipulated research that you did could not even declare victory for you. you. Uh, but mm. they conducted their own research, led by Dr. Isaac Ozu Mensa, my, my former lecturer. And even in that research, they are predicting a tie between the two parties. I mean, well, it is your, even, if that is even your own research. We are not even putting out... The president's out, research... Uh, yes, it was, it's, it's out all over. Time. Yesterday, many of no, no, your no, sister no, stations have discussed it. And you're okay. talking about the party losing the election. Men for me. Please, Roland, the messi our message is clear. Our message is simple, that mm. we are relentless in our efforts to get a credible register. And Jane Mensah, who today is behaving like the NPP's director of election. The Electoral Commission should stop behaving like a wing of the NPP and provide Ghanaians with a credible register. Mm. If indeed you have performed, why will your national organizer... And look, mm -hmm. let the executives of the NPP, including Nana B, who sit on social media and go into the media and throw some of those tantrums, make ridiculous statements that they will resist. Who are you? When things become tough, Nana B, what can you even do? Look, we are what? All we want is a credible register. The NPP cannot, Jihai. cannot hide behind the Electoral Commission to prevent Ghanaians from getting a register. You, Nana, if you're a man, stand up and say that you are leading a demonstration against the NDC for demanding a credible Adam. register. What can he even do? Adam, Adam, threat, These people please, believe please, that yes. it's not a threat. Adam, 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 this will, no, but he, they are issuing threats. They will resist. They will do this. Why well, you think that you can hide behind the institutions of state to misbehave? Really? We are only asking right. for a credible Jihai. register. If you have performed, make sure we yes. get a credible register and you will so, see that so, your government so, cannot so the even get 30 percent. Is the position of uh, the national organizer? That, that, that's their national organizer. So if he yeah, has spoken, yeah, that yeah, is yeah, your yeah, position. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the NDC must understand something. That's this republic is for Ghanaians and not NDC. Okay. Well, we are not. We are, oh, not Adam, they, Adam, please allow. We are men as no much as they are. When you were talking, no, he didn't. Adam, please, have, please. We we have balls as much as they have. You have what? We have balls as much as they have. You have balls just as if the NDC If you cut has. us, there will be blood. If we cut you, there will be blood. And that notice must be served to everybody. This election, we shall go into it prepared. We shall go into it with our message. We shall go into it and preach to the Ghanaian people <laughs> as to what we have done with the mandate that they've given us, what we seek to do with the new presidential candidate we are presenting to the Ghanaian people. Sure. And the record must be made clear that John Dramani Mahama, was a vice president, had the opportunity to understudy somebody, became a president, and still failed. We have a presidential candidate that has gotten the opportunity to understudy Nana Dodanko Akufuado. For us as an administration, we admit where our flaws have been. And we have made it a point from our manifesto and our preaching to the Ghanaian people that are giving the mandate, these are the pointers and these are the issues we are going to address. And these are the messages that we are sending to people that are giving the mandate, this is what we are going to do. But it should not be made for the NPP to believe, for the NDC to believe that they can intimidate anybody in this country. I stand with my national organizer and I say that the EC is clothed with the powers and the ability to order the register. In any case, before you have a final register, it goes through phases. We do not even have a final register. The EC has done an exhibition. The purpose of the exhibition, just like the person who you called on the on set, is for us to identify some of these anomalies. And at the end of the day, if the essence of the exhibition is for you to correct, that is why you even do, I mean, adverts and direct people to go to their centers and go and check. In any case, if there is no cause, why do you have to even put in place a self-correcting mechanism? And that is the position of the EC. The NPP's position is that as far as we are concerned, the EC is closed with the mandate and is available to do that job. We are not ready for any third party to come and take that opportunity, that responsibility. And in doing so, now they've shifted to the, from the issues and they are not calling into question the credibility of some of the commissioners. Let me tell the NDC that Article 44 of the Constitution of Ghana 
<coughs> which is the supreme law of this country, has given us the criteria by which a person qualifies to be a commissioner. Anything apart from that, if the indice alleges, they should go to court. And this is not the time that these people have been, um, I mean, appointed onto this position. In any case, why has the NDC sat down all this while, waited for election time for them to be coming between these tantrums? The impression they create is as though, you know, they are going to this election with some, you know, chickens and men who do not know what they are about. If the NDC bring a hundred, we'll bring a thousand. If they bring a thousand, we'll bring a million. You and bring that, that message mm -hmm. must go to them. The impression that they create is that this election is like, I mean, it's a do or die affair. It is either them or nothing else. For us, we are ready to win this election. And the Ghanaian people will determine the outcome of this election. Let it also be said, this is the same NDC that went to court and told the Ghanaian people an election had been ringed in the NDP's favor. The, 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 the Supreme Court asked that, provide evidence to the effect. Up to today, we are waiting for the NDC to even collect their results, not to talk of even coming to the Supreme Court, provide evidence to say. We sat in this country for the NDC to come and tell us that they are in a comfortable lead as far as they are concerned. Their supporters should move onto the streets of Accra. At the end of the day, what came out of it? So we know the people that we are dealing with. In any case, the NPP, just like any other political party, has a stake in this election. Our position on this matter is as free, just as you also have a platform to say. You say you want a credible register. Yes. We also say we agree with you. Perhaps your divergent position is that you want a third party to come and do it. We say that as far as we are concerned, the EC has the power and the ability to do so. And the EC has also intimated that it is already in the process to do so. You have even been asked. In any case, make the evidence available to the Ghanaian people. If not for the, I mean, if not for noise making and just going about and throwing tantrums and just throwing things in there without providing evidence. And you have been noted for that. So let it not be created that, that an impression should not be created that the MPP will watch you people to do what you want to do. So once you agree that there has to be a credible exactly. and then the matter should end there. And, and I, I don't think anybody <laughs> must argue that there shouldn't be a credible You see, beyond this credible register, there are data protection issues. Look, I sit in my house and on the on the fifth of September twenty twenty four, all of a sudden I receive a text message from Dr. Baumier's campaign. Uh, you know him, no? Is he not your he's your friend? No, no, no. We are not friends in this matter. We are friends on this issue. What message did you receive? But yes. Have you received one from your mama? Dear, no, I haven't. I haven't. Dear Solomon. Why no people who are? Thank you so much for coming out in numbers to show your love and support. This is an indictment to my person. How did I come out to show support to you? <laughs> Was it a generic message? It's uh, how did he, to you. How, this is my message. I can't, you can't project it. Can you know? I, can, this is serious. Can you give me 30 seconds? No, no, please, go ahead. <laughs> That yes. can, you, I, can, I, can you give me a screenshot no, of this? I'll give you. Let me. What's your number? Zero two six. Uh, hey, continue this, talking. Do uh, a screenshot. You, you understand? Uh -huh. So, but your mama. So how? No, no, no. Hi. You I'll say you let me speak. Yeah. Yeah. Let's speak. So your concern is how did he get my number? How did he know that I came out to cheer him on? How did he know that I support him for him to have sent me this message? I had this message, my wife had it. Maybe it's a, it's a mass message. How, message. How, what, what message who, message? Gave, who, who gave that permission? And this is the same issue that... Uh, so uh, you're raising bio, uh, data protection. Potentially. So, so if the NPP... An invasion of privacy. So if they have this data, it must tell you something that probably they have access to the EC data. And that is why we must take it very, Roland. very serious. Roland. Where's the screenshot? Roland, 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 I want to your number is what? Roland, Roland, I think that you need to Roland. understand something. Zero, 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 please off their mics. Um, they are not up for this. Off their mics. Zero two the end. Zero two six two two four. I want to give you an information. Two two nine seven. Two two nine seven. Zero two six. Okay, Adam, you can speak. So Roland. 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 Okay. All the political parties have various ways by which. They or, get the data. Roland, I want us to pay attention to something very important. Mm -hmm. All the political parties have various three ways. Three minutes. minutes. They have various ways by which we gather data of voters, electorates. And then you can send them this mass So you message. also send the bulk messages? I do send bulk messages. So you, you are not but, part of Solomon who is complaining? No, no, no. no. This, this is the point. Our issue, our concern is that at the time of registration, the NPP agents at the centers did not even collect the telephone numbers of those who registered newly. But the moment you register today, by evening or the following morning, you receive a message from Dr. Baumia thanking you as a new voter. Sort of you recall, during the limited registration, I registered 
-hmm. over 6,000 people within my constituency yes. during the limited registration. I saw in my constituency the NPP agents. In fact, I recall a situation where one of my executives came with his son. The son did not give his details to the NPP agent at the registration center. But by the following morning, he had gotten a test message from Dr. Baumia. And that is why we are saying that it is Baruch, clear. I was not that, it is uh, obvious. And if, if the letter yes, commission, no, you gave me three so minutes. So, if so, the so, letter so, commission, no. So, so, if the letter you commission disagrees, I'm, 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 I'm telling you that. How is the letter? No, no. But your Muhammad, this is a Oh, you see. Roland, 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 allow me to ask. Yes. No, my three minutes is here. My three minutes is here. nearly created a problem between me and my wife. When I got the message, that Baumia message. I'm telling you. Hey, so I am telling you, Roland. My wife told me that. Ah, since when did you go back to the MPP? I said, I said see what Dr. Baumia has sent you. That so when your you wife saw this and she, saw that it was coming from Dr. Baumia, my, mar that my marriage nearly collapsed. <laughs> so until because she knows that you are with Alan. Alan. So until she had this, your loyalty. You understand. So uh, my question is, where did she? Uh, uh, did did this group get this? Freshly registered voter. Lawyer, I have sent you the Nana, I'll say. No, no, no. If Kumasi, who is celebrating his birthday today, also received them. New messages. That's all we're talking Interesting. about. Interesting. Roland. You understand? No, 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 but happy birthday, uh, lawyer, I'll say. Uh, right. May God bless you. Roland. So the point is that. Roland, I have shared with you. No, no, let, no, no, let no, no. him learn. The point is that you are being. The two of you are being. The two of them are celebrating. They have our data. No, no, no. You are just. And as where they got the data, it could be coming from the letter of. Me me who have shared so all our data with the new Batote party for which reason they go about sending bulk messages yeah, yeah, you and this can be sealed but in this country sometimes when it's a privacy I'm saying that um, no, no, no. No, no, no. no I think you are not being fair to me no, no, I have sent you evidence of John Mahama sending messages not to the Ghanaian people not he has sent a message so Roland who told you that for every registration center the NPP the NDC has representatives if your agent have the failed the agents. and you didn't train them well and they didn't I'm have the serious. capacity to take numbers of people who have been registered don't come and blame the NPP so I am this tells you the capacity you of the NPP no, me, in any me, case for every me, election that we have run I have sent you the evidence of John Mahama this is a message this is a message which was sent by John Mahama to a person at Sege when he recently visited there he said dear chiefs and people of Sege I will be in your constituency will support during my campaign to the vote for change to reset that that is different from and I sent you the message that is different from so promptly Muhammad receiving a message from Baumia as soon as you register. All right, let me How speak did to Muhammad Sojo know that the person is Sojo, good morning. Is How did Muhammad know that the person is good morning. Uh, How did John Muhammad know that the person is Sojo? Yeah. Do we have Kojo on the line? Yeah. Please. Yeah. Kojo? Kojo, good morning. Good morning. Yeah, and you drew my attention. Please, what yeah, is right. your case when you went to the station during the period of the exhibition of the voters register? Yeah. Yeah, my my vote has been transferred from my polling station to the district polling station when I have not initiated any such transfers. And so uh, I think that uh, the, the audit issue is valid and must come on. Okay. Everybody should just leave easy to defend themselves. They are also party to the election. And what I think is that, yes, they may disagree with the position of the opposition party. But they should let those who are being called to do the proper thing speak for themselves. And mm. all this is necessary and must come on. Okay. Now, did you go and check at your initial station? Yes, I did. And you didn't find your name there? Yes, it's been transferred. Gotcha. Without my consent. No, but transfers. And you are not a first-time voter, are you? Please, please. Oh, you are not a first-time voter, could you? Not at all. I am not. It's not a first-time voter. There's clearly a criminal intent. My fault is here. Even if there is what I talk about. Even if it was one criminal intent. Okay, hold on, hold on. Criminal intent. Shadrach, I've given you a number. A number. Please call that number for me. All right. Okay, gentlemen. Please, your there, mics are off. There is I'm the only one who has right. an okay, audible. Right. Yeah, Kojo, thank you very much. I'm the only you one who has down. an audible mic. Right. So after thank Solomon, you. I move to the next. That's okay. Now, you made an intervention. Yes. So I give you an extra two minutes to conclude. So my intervention is that, like I said, all of us as candidates, we do 
find ways of getting data to send messages to, to people. But in this case, what I am saying, not alleging, is the fact that even when a newly registered voter during the recently concluded limited registration did not give his or her number to the NPP agent, you promptly receive a message from Dr. Baumia right after registering. He said that which clearly, have no, no, no. And I'm telling you that with John Mohammed's own, yeah. and like all of us, we have various ways. For example, I recently wrote to secondary schools within my constituency asking for the data, telephone numbers of students that qualified and are registered voters. When they give me that data and I send them messages, that is not the same as immediately you register. Oliver. You receive a message Oliver from Dr. Baumia. Okay, Clearly, the EC, I, the I, EC I, is no, conniving. Okay, the EC is conniving with the MPP. Lastly, if he's done, why is the MPP saying that we cannot allow a third party to come and do an independent audit when the EC's data currently is being managed by a third party? Yes. See the hypocrisy, the double okay, standard EC's, with which they are the working EC's. with. Service provider. Shameless people. We have back. caught you. We have I mean, exposed you. TV3, with all its functionalities. You know how sensitive intelligence you have. Don't you rely on third parties to provide you certain services? Does that mean so that you have earnestly given out your so, management so, system? No, That's your database management system. Data if you have a service provider, it does not necessarily mean that you offset that responsibility to a third party. What are you talking about? But let me state this clearly. If you want to know how robust, Roland, Roland, I think that you should pay attention to me. If you want to know how robust MPP's internal election management mechanism is, look at how consistently. Talking, no, I'm coming. I'm giving you a. I'm, I'm pointing to a certain position. Is it relation to um, that? Yes. Look at how consistently we've been able to compile our results ahead of even the EC and giving our results. The NDC is doing what they've been doing all the time. Up to today, 2020 elections results, they've not even been able to collate which it. Result? And at the end of the day, our ability, our I ability, no, pay attention, yeah, our result? ability to collate our results <laughs> and give it which ahead result? of time well, is the same mechanism we have in place to make sure that at every registration center, we are able to get whoever is registered. Because in, irrespective of who you are, whether you are NDC or you are MPP, as soon as you get to the registration center, you know, we get your data and make sure that no, I'm saying that if the, the NDC, if the NDC the has failed, they don't have collated no, 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 but has the NDC been able to able to provide the results at the Supreme Court? You are accountable to the Ghanaian people, and that is why you couldn't provide it when you went to court. So what are you saying? I'm from saying from that Oliver our capacity yeah, to collect our results is Oliver manifested in ability to take the data of any first-time voters who comes to the registration center. You if you have failed to do so, blame yourself. Oli ah. Oliver George says, Roland, tell Adam, I'm in the Eastern region, but Mahama sent me a message after he saw in the voter region. Where did he get my data from? All right, and then, and then, and then, and then I have, I have this one from uh, Richmond. So you see why I have this one from Richmond. Please, their mic should be off. I have this one from Richmond Roxon. Richmond Roxon says, and he's a legal practitioner though. Richmond Roxon. Lawyer Richmond Roxon says, I have petitioned the Data Protection Commission to investigate the potential data protection breaches. Absolutely. As I have not given, neither have I authorized any institution to share my personal data with this is serious. Dr. Baumia or his team. The way the message the way the message is tailored, especially with my name and personalized yes. and is very consistent across board, suggests that the information emanated from the electoral commission mm -hmm. when I registered in 2020, I didn't share with any individual the messages also are personalized and are blasted across board to thousands of people in various locations across the country. I take strong exception to this yes. and I will follow this through. Roland. And he says, dear Gilbert, join me on Friday Blah, blah, blah. When Roland. the possibility bus arrives, did you get that one Roland, too? Your I wife didn't come. No, 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 no. And let me state it. No, no, no. I have read your message. I have read Adam. Are you emphasizing on Doctor Baumia? I'm saying that I have read. I have read. I have read. I have read. To be sincere, I have read. Have you called people who did not give their data? I have read. I have read. Also sending messages to people. I have read. Questioning that. I have read. I read this message. And is that? It's the same message. Who's giving us a name? 
the chiefs and people of Sege, is that not oh, the not next one? Not okay. no, just that one. And then, yeah, wait, wait. <laughs> wait, wait. <laughs> Dear <laughs> chiefs <laughs> and people. The okay. more okay. reason why, why the country was doing away with this MPP and NDC. <laughs> this is John I'm telling you that. Dear Afari Courage, over the last eight years, we have faced high cost of living, a weak city, excessive borrowing, and unbridled corruption. With you, the NDC can be said in the country and build the country we want. This is from John Muhammad. Muhammad. Yes, this is from I've, I've read. This is from John Muhammad. So, so it, 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 it kills. <laughs> So the electoral you commission, please get you see off their the minds. The electoral commission is giving data. Off their minds. You see, the you see and we have you evidence. Can John Dramahani My data is really with the NDP, NDP and yeah. they are using it they have been inefficient, it does not mean that somebody must be held liable for it. Okay, gentlemen. Do I have your ears now? Yes. Isaac. Thank you, my brother. MP candidates. They said they are going to tell them. Do I have your yes now? Oh, all right. Okay, okay, sorry. Okay, okay. I didn't say talk. Uh, hey. Okay, I thought you asked. No, no, it's not a question. <laughs> so I received this one from Chairman Prosper. He says, My daughter Portia received the same message without from Dr. Wamet just after registering. Her number. Yeah, that's what okay. I mean. Okay. Okay. Tell me without point, giving her number. I'm saying that point. if you have been, see, you have shown time and again you that. that you are incompetent when it comes that to collecting results. So I am not surprised you are not even able to get data of people who are coming to register. Don't the MPP is able to do that. So what I say, I have been ignorant. I have met you at the registration center before. Oh. If you go to the former EC headquarters at Accra Central at Ridge, if you go to the EC office at Ridge, when you go there, MPP agents are scavenging everywhere to make sure that and each and every person that is coming so, to register. So, 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 as for I'm not surprised. I'm saying that as for they are not even done auditing the people on their pages. Today, as I speak to you, they are still calling to question the credibility of people on their WhatsApp page. So as for they are not even done. They are not even done. Yesterday evening, they were still making allegations for people who they You, you were created with your rape. You, 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 we took you your regular ideals and principles of the NPP and we died said Nana People's Party so they can deal with that. Right. But what I'm saying is that for the new patriotic party to send a message directly to me, when their candidate visited Ukraine South, it means they have gotten my data from the Electoral Commission. And you have a problem. And I have a problem with that. In fact, it's, 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 it's a data protection issue. All right. My point is that... One and a half minutes, sir. My point, and it's important for listeners... Shadra, please do the call. It's important, you, it's important for Hyde to get the distinction of the issues. Stop making noise. We are saying that there is a situation where voters, newly registered voters, who did not, and I'm repeating, who did not give their contacts to NPP, agents. neither NPP or NDC agents, immediately after they are done registering, they get a prompt message from Dr. Baumia, which means the EC's data system may be linked to that of the MPP. And we have several cases. And that's what I'm saying that I can say that I'm telling the electoral commission, we know that they share their data with the MPP. That is different from the NDC or any other candidate getting data several years or after the process. 
We are saying that the MPP is receiving data from the Electoral Commission, and someone sent you a message that his daughter registered. His daughter Portia registered. Even without giving her data to the MPP agent at the station, promptly received a test message from Dr. Baumia. And you want to tell me that Isaac, the MPP I, is not I, benefiting I, so, uh, from privileged I, information I, from the EC? Position, that position I, is I, different I, from I, what I, you are saying. Adam, you give me a platform to speak. Adam, allow me to make my point. My position has been consistent. That's what I'm saying that for each and every election, for us as NPP, we are ready to go into it with everything and anything based on issues in, in order for us to win this election. Adam, Adam, you, I've met you, I have met you at a registration center before. When you come to a particular registration center, we go through rigorous training and make sure that as much as possible, any person coming to the registration center to register, we take the person's details. But not all. We are saying and that at the end of the day, did not give if it. the NPP to that one. has let him talk. Have, have been able to successfully him. gather enough data and send specific hide, messages hide, to people, hide. why are you not talking hide. about people his interjections? Okay. He people spoke and I didn't that. interject. So why are you know. watching him? Let him continue. Because, because at the end of the day, if we continue like this, then we are not going to end the program. There's no way Adam is going to speak on this platform. Because at every point that he makes a statement, I will interject him. Why do I sit down and watch him speak without any interjection? And yet you want him to make a point. And I'm saying that I've also provided evidence. You sat on this platform. I've provided evidence to the effect that John Dramani Mama is also sending messages. So that when he benefits John Dramani he's more human than that, anybody in this country. He's John, 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 John Romani, Mama, more human than any other person in this country. People. People we are going to reach this election with every equal footing. I'm saying that the NPP has demonstrated the capacity the to gather data, data has demonstrated capacity to collect results, which the NDC has not to do. For us, we have, we, for us, this is not surprising. Because the NDC has been up to today, they have been able to compare their results. But I'm getting disappointed. I'm saying that at some point in time, when Adam is speaking, I've been quiet. If you want us to continue on this side, then let's go on. No, they are too young. Yes, then let's go on. It's not, I'm, I'm teaching him because Adam is not speaking on this platform again. Oh, because at any point in time, he makes a signal. Joseph, all right, then let me speak. Here. Ask Joseph. Yeah, yeah. You are not the host. Joseph, yeah. Joseph, uh, the show Joseph says, I'm Joseph Quarty. I'm watching. I got a prompt message from Dr. Baumia. Well, it's all okay. Immediately after registering, when you don't give your contact to them, they hide. 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 They Today they are talking about national. What the enemy is asking for? Give us a break. What are you talking about? I'm saying that you have to be. What are you talking about? I don't know for your reasons. What are you talking about? You are chasing a data from a data from a person. I don't know. All right. Ah, you're serious. Senior, His name is even like impersonation. Let's go. 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 let us In our ears. Yes. So clearly, this is one of the reasons why <laughs> Dr. Mahoma <laughs> 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 Napo was his best friend every month. Can you imagine two billion cities being given to the business community in this country? What you can do? You have no idea. Yeah, they said they claim they engaged 100,000. I have petitioned the, the, the right information. I want to get the full list of the 100,000. It is one of the scandals that after 2025 it will be exposed. I can bet my last person that the 100,000 they, they claim they were paying is a palpable falsehood. They organized on 10,000 people. And inflated it to 100,000, and they said we're paying them every month. It's not true that. Now, how can it be true? How can it? Where, where, where? I mean, I have called for the data. Mm -hmm. So clearly, because the, it was not thought through well, because there was no actionable, actionable plans to it, that is why you have the youth who are now in the house, not having anything to do. Now, they, they said after the NAPCO, you would either be maintaining an institution that you were working, 
or you'll be sent back to school, or you'll be given some working capital to start your business. None of it has happened, and that is why the young ones are so furious with this administration, particularly uh, the vice president, for leading them astray. And here, let me call on the NAPCO personnel that you can only have your, your, your protection with a movement for change. It is not going to happen with the MPP. Neither is it going to happen with the NDC. The only institution or the only individual who is bent on solving the youth unemployment by giving you 10-point agenda to deal comprehensively with it is Alan Chemati. That's why by next month he's launching that platform, digital platform, to contain 3 million people, really? each one with his uh, 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 what's called CV, so that when it comes to office, not that he's going to look for people to employ, Roland, we engage you straight Roland, we, we in the NDC stand in solidarity with the NAPCO trainees. And it is sad that you work so hard and the government cannot find money to pay your allowances. Some are even in arrears of about 13 months and more. So and, 16 and, months. And, and, and some 16 months. And so many of them are demanding for their allowance. It would have been a bit more tolerable if indeed by the government's actions, indeed they show that the government does not have money. But in this case, if you have a government that can look for $58 million and push into a useless project like the National Cathedral, which has become a swimming a pool swimming for the, the demonstrators. Yesterday, they went, some jumped inside, and that, that shows the uselessness of this government. Because it, for, for a government that can, that can put $58 million into that, but cannot find money to pay NAPCO IRS. But what is even more... What is I'm, even uh, more interesting, no, 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 thank Roland, is the fact that Roland, 25th thank you August, Dr. Dr. Baumia promised it's paying them. Dr. Yeah, Baumia yeah, promised them. So Dr. Baumia promised paying them. No, where is the money? The money for Dr. Baumia promised them. We had in this country, prior to the coming of NAPCO, one of the biggest challenges we had in this country as a youth is experience. Almost every work somebody is looking for has been to provide a certain service. That was the reason for NAPCO. The essence of NAPCO is for people to go through. But unemployment rate, unemployment rate is now 14.7 percent. Look at this. Unemployment rate is now 14.7 percent. The finance minister. Unemployment rate is now 14.7 percent. That is where you are. You are justifying this. Gentlemen, thank you. Very much. It's a precedent. Who have worked for three years? They were 539 for your chance to win big. We they were direct and they were chop money. No, I'm going for you. Thank you very much, gentlemen.